Hello, SMPS volunteers. Welcome to today's virtual roundtable for volunteers on SMPS's Certified Professional Services Marketer designation, or as we call it, CPSM. This program will be recorded and made available on the SMPS YouTube volunteer training channel, as well as the library of the All Chapter Leaders community of my SMPS. This is Natalie Gossard, SMPS's Chapter Services Manager, and I'm joined today on the administra administrative side of this webinar by SMPS's Chapter Services Membership Coordinator, Julio Santos. On behalf of the SMPS board and the entire headquarters staff here in Alexandria, Virginia, we extend a big thank you to you all for joining us today and for all that you do to serve your chapter members and the society at large. Before we get started today, just wanted to let you know that all lines have been muted. We encourage questions and the sharing of great ideas. So if you have a comment or a question, please press the raise hand icon located on the right side of your screen and we'll unmute you. You may also ask questions by typing your question in the question box, and that's located on the right side of your screen. We'll stop about halfway through today's program and encourage your questions, and Julio and I will be looking for your questions, so please feel free to submit. Again, today's program is on the CPSM designation, and it's entitled CPSM, What You Need to Know. Our presenter today is, CP is SMPS Certification and IT Manager Kevin Doyle. Welcome, Kevin. You ready to get started? I'm ready to get started. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Natalie. Uh, thank you, Julio. And thank you to all our chapter leaders and all attendees for being here today. We appreciate your time. We know it's precious. Let's jump right in and get down to it. We're going to start off talking about eligibility for the CPSM examination. And what better place to start than with our old friend Josh Baskin from the t excuse me, almost a TV show from the movie Big. Yep, there he is. He grows up to be Tom Hanks and make a lot of money, but before he does that, he's got to get past this chicken and he's got to get past this guy with the handkerchief on his head and the, the plaid shirt and the apron. But what's, what's he doing? What's he trying to do? He's trying to impress that young blonde haired girl. He wants to get on the ride. And why is it so important he's that tall? Well, obviously, if a guy of, of his height goes on the ride, it's possible that he could be injured. He could get knocked around when he's on the ride because he's not big enough, hence the name of the film, Big. Now, friends, that's the reason why Josh Baskin couldn't get onto his ride. And I'm not saying that anyone's going to be actually injured uh, if they try to take the CPSM program, but they're not eligible. But the test can might possibly bang them around a little bit. I have had candidates over the years who have reached out to me afterwards. Uh, they received a non-passing score, and they have been more than a little bit upset, uh, angry, uh, some tearful, uh, some downright ornery, and they have felt that they were not properly prepared for it, but it, so it starts with eligibility, and that's what I want to talk about first. Oops. Eligibility. To begin with, understand something, my friends. Eligibility is never about exclusion. We are not putting these, when I say we, oh, and I'll be saying that frequently, I, when I say we, I'm referring to the society. The society does not put these policies in place to exclude. On the contrary, like Josh getting on that ride, we want you to be successful. We want you to get ahead. We want you to become CPSMs. I want you to be a CPSM. The society wants you to be a CPSM. But we feel that if you're going to be ready for that, you've got to be eligible. There are three ways. They're in front of you right now. You can either possess a bachelor's degree or an advanced degree, a master's or a PhD even. And then you need four years of experience in professional services marketing and or business development. Just as a reminder, that experience, that work experience, does not, I say again, does not have to be in the AEC industry. If you were doing professional services marketing and or business development for a legal firm, an accounting firm, an IT firm, a not-for-profit, that will count towards your work history, as will any uh, internships in college, paid or unpaid. Again, as long as the focus was on marketing and or business development. So that's one method with a bachelor's degree. Or if you don't have that with an associate's degree, we need six years experience, same uh, level of work, or type, type of work, I should say, and without any formal degree, meaning typically a high school diploma, we're looking for eight years of experience. So there's the one of, th th those are the three ways you can be eligible to sit for the test. That's actually a really important part of the entire process. That's the foundation. That's the base. Again, the society feels you're going to need that before you can even begin to approach taking this test, and we hope, we hope, 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 that you do uh, some serious study, some serious preparation on top of that. 
Oh, a big step back, by the way, friends. Uh, people who I talk to all the time, some folks know an awful lot about the CPSM program. Some people know absolutely nothing about the program. I have to assume that I'm going to cover people or, or reach out to people who don't know anything about this. So if what I'm talking about already uh, is are things you know, bear with me. I'll try and get to things that you don't know in future slides. Back to now uh, the, the, the current slide on the page. Last but not least, we ask all candidates that, to take the pledge to abide by the CPSM Code of Ethics. Uh, the honor system is extremely important in, uh, in the CPSM program, and uh, especially when it gets later, both uh, for testing purposes and for uh, uh, recertification. And I'll touch on the reasons why later, uh, actually, they'll become obvious. Moving on down, here it is. What's it all about? The SMPS domains of practice. If you ever, I'm actually going to take a step back. If you as chapter leaders are ever approached by a person who says, you know, I think I'm eligible, I think I've got it all, uh, my work history covers this, 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 I'm not quite sure if I really fill out the eligibility requirements, what I do and what you can do is send them to the SMPS domains of practice. That's what this is all about. The program, this is the very backbone, it's the very nerve structure for the CPSM program. The SMPS domains of practice was based upon a role delineation survey, also known as a job analysis or a practice analysis. All it does, it's a survey, and it went out to the entire society and asked the question of what it is that a professional services marketer and or business developer does. It listed various job functions, and it asked two questions. Do you do this frequently, and is it important to your job function? So frequency and level of importance. If the surveyors answered yes to both of those, yes, this is a function I do frequently, and yes, this is important, it became one of the knowledge areas and or skill sets in our domains of practice. And that is how the domains of practice was put together. And then we, we did a role delineation survey first in 1997. We did one again recently in 2013. And these are the six main knowledge areas. Obviously, I won't take you, full, I won't take you through all the skill sets. You can find those yourself online. But those are the knowledge areas they're going to be tested on. And so whenever I have a candidate come to me and say, hey, Kevin, I'm not quite sure. I think I got the experience, but it's only in certain areas. I send them to the domains of practice. I say, look at it. Take a serious self-assessment and be brutally honest. Do you have a background, a work history that covers, again, not all of these areas, but most or parts, some of these areas within each of these domains? If you don't, if you just say do a lot of uh, graphics work for your firm and you never touch on client and business development or planning or research proposals or anything else, my advice is to give it a little bit of time. And I'll come back to the whole idea about time and the importance of taking your time when it comes to the CPSM. There's no rushing this. There's no rushing to become a CPSM. There are no shortcuts. Write that down. There are no shortcuts. But again, SMPS domains of practice, you'll be hearing me talk about that more and more, but it truly is, again, what drives the program, the test, everything. Okay, the application process. Basically, like I've already mentioned, when you sit down to complete your application, and all of this is now handled through Professional Testing Corporation, better known as PTC. I'll be referring to PTC throughout the slide presentation, so that's who I'm talking about. That They are our psychometric agency based in New York. Very smart bunch of people, psychometricians for the record just off to the side, are people who are professional test question, test developers, uh, it's what they do for a living. They are have been in business for many years, have many, many clients, and we are lucky to be one of them. But when you're completing your application, which SMPS and PTC put together, they're going to basically look at like, the two things I just mentioned, your education and your employment history, and you guessed it, how your job experience is relevant to the SMPS domains of practice. Now, we have streamlined the application process. It used to be a lot of paper, a lot of things to fill out and send off and send back with references. We streamlined that, and then we streamlined it again when PTC and SMPS came together. So it's a much, much, much easier process to get through uh, for candidates who are wishing to prepare and get ready for and to become, ultimately, CPSMs. Application process, then easy steps for you. You complete and submit the online CPSM application form and fee to Professional Testing Corporation, PTC. Uh, give them two weeks, friends. Uh, the application is going to be reviewed by them. They have many clients and therefore many candidates. They have many applications, therefore, to review. So please give them a space, approximately two weeks, 
to review everything. They will then send you uh, the, what they call the eligibility notice. The eligibility notice from PTC will come to you via email. The eligibility notice, uh, any of you friends, uh, I know I'm, I'm big on movies today, Willy Wonka, it's your golden ticket. The eligibility notice is your golden ticket into the exam. Know this, once you receive that eligibility notice, you have one year. You've got one whole year to sit for the test. So it gives you all the details on how to schedule it. Uh, it's on your, your online examination at a PSI testing center. I know I'm hitting you with a lot of letters here. Who's PSI, you say? PSI was subcontracted through Professional Testing Corporation, PTC. PSI has testing centers literally around the globe. You can take your test anywhere USA, outside the country. Uh, we, well, SMPS, we have no actual direct relationship with PSI. They're a third party hired by PTC. Uh, PTC is the psychometrics and the psychometric agency. PSI has many, many, many testing centers. That's the whole relationship. All right, that, that's the application process. If you want to have more details, please go to the website, www.smps.org, and look under certification and then under apply. All right, keep on going here. Time to prepare for the test. So you've got your eligibility notice, and again, you can do this. There's not an exact order. You can start to prepare and then complete your application or uh, do the application and then prepare or somewhere in between. It's entirely up to you. But again, just remember, once your application is reviewed and approved, you've got one whole year after you receive that eligibility notice. Now then, preparing. My three cardinal rules, I've literally been using these now for, gosh, better part of 12 years. And again, it's uh, some of the things I've already mentioned. Read the books. The books are the suggested reading list. Uh, you can find these under the study materials section. My uh, cursor, I'm pointing to the bottom down here at the bottom of the page. Again, www.smps.org. Go to certification and study. You'll see the list of books that the society suggests you read to prepare for the test. Number two, can't talk about this one enough. Join a local CPSM study group. I have been endorsing, promoting uh, CPSM study groups now, uh, again, for a good 12 years. I just can't say enough about them and about the great people like yourselves, chapter leaders, who uh, give their precious, valuable time. Uh, it's, it's completely on a volunteer basis to help candidates prepare for the test. A study group, what happens there? Mostly it's just people uh, sitting down and discussing things, writing things down, things, self-testing one another. Uh, it's people coming together. They're all in the same boat. And um, it, it's been an extremely successful process. So I highly, highly, highly recommend joining a local CPSM study group. Third and finally, take your time. I mentioned this one earlier. There are no shortcuts to becoming a CPSM. You know, I'm an old guy now, so I can say this. This is it's an old school kind of thinking. Uh, in this day and age, uh, with the technology that makes us move faster and faster with each passing day, we all go flying down the road, and we're always asked for more and more and more and quicker and quicker. CPSM really is no rush. You've got to put in the time to read. You've got to put in the time to study. You've got to put in the time to learn. That's what I'm trying to get to. You've got to learn. This program is all about ongoing education, ongoing learning. So to rush that process is, flies in the face of what it's all about. The program was designed for people to learn, to help better themselves and become uh, their, their level of professionalism, again, through ongoing education, through ongoing learning. So you just can't rush that. To rush that would be to uh, it would be taking taking away from the very uh, central theme of the program. So you got to take your time. Some CPSM study tools we offer. I'll come to those in a second. But before I do, we have an exciting polling question. That's right, a polling question for those of you out there attending today. And I'm going to turn it over to my good friend Julio Santos, who is going to uh, uh, launch this polling question. Julio, are you there? And uh, what do we do now? <laughs> yes, so um, I'll go ahead and launch the question. So we have a great question here. Um, does your chapter offer uh, CPSM study groups? Of course, uh, the selections are yep, uh, for sure, nope, not yet, or I'm not sure. And we'll go ahead and give you about 30 seconds um, to uh, submit all answers. Excellent. Thank you, Julio. Yep, chapter study groups. Uh, Again, if you're not sure, that's okay. No harm, no foul in that. I'm hoping the answer from most of the group is going to be yes. Um, again, I've worked with so, so very many good, good people over the years who uh, 
again, put together just great, great study groups. They brought in CPSMs to speak. Uh, food and drink was offered. Oh, look at that. Whammy. 96%. Thank you. I was hoping it was going to be a home run, and that sure was. Uh, thank you, Julio. Uh, 96%. Okay, so we're on board with that one. Boy, that was an easy sell. No, I'm just kidding. Friends, everybody who answered yes to that, you are walking the right path. That's a, that's a big, big, big help. And thank you again uh, for helping to lead study groups. They are intrinsic to uh, helping folks as they prepare uh, to become CPSMs. Some of the tools offered by SMPS headquarters are over here on the right. We put together a very, uh, uh, what I think is a very high quality study guide. And I'm working on yet another newer version of that right now. Domains of practice, of course, I touched on that. That's available to download from our website. There's a thing called the CPSM Handbook. Friends, don't confuse that with the Marketing Handbook for the Design and Construction Professional, which is an actual book to read. The CPSM Handbook is basically an administrative guide describing all of, well, kind of what I've talked about, application processes, testing. Uh, it covers things much more comprehensively and in-depth than I can today in a given time. And it's all written down for you, again, prepared by SMPS and PTC. Highly recommend you download that. It's a helpful little tool there if you have questions. And if you have more questions still, of course, you can reach out to yours truly or PTC. Uh, finally, I've already touched on the suggested reading list, which is the series of books you want to put your arms around and start reading as you prepare for the test. So let's keep moving. Ah, there we go, prepare. Now, I mentioned the suggested reading list. Well, friends, as you may have heard by now, and I'm sure you have heard, change is in the wind. And uh, it's actually here. Um, currently, the books on the suggested reading list are the ones in the top right-hand corner and the ones that we've been using for quite some time. Uh, and when I say that, understand that several of these books, we are now into second or even third editions. We've been using them for that long. But there they are, AEC Marketing Fundamentals, the Marketing Handbook for the Design Construction Professional, I just mentioned, uh, Ford Harding's a series, both Creating Rainmakers and Rainmaking, Architecture of Value by my friend Craig Park, Note I have Wired to Clients or Rewired. Uh, that's a book by David Stone. And then I'll, let me come back to that. Then Planet by Elizabeth Quibi. These are the main core books right now. Uh, I mentioned uh, back to David Stone, Wired to Clients or Rewired. David literally, in the past, it's been only about maybe three months, now, maybe four months, time flies. He had put out a new book called Rewired, which contains everything that was in his previous book, Wired to Clients, plus a few new chapters that cover life, uh, since the recession. So Wired to Clients is officially no longer being published or sold, but it's still out there in circulation. It's literally all over the place. I've got copies of it. You can buy it at Amazon, online. Uh, so And there's, there's test questions that source to that actual book. But the good news is I spoke to David Stone, the great man himself, and he said, Kevin, everything that was in Wired to Clients is also in Rewired. So you can really use either of those books. But there is the seven right now. Now, what we also have heard about is, yep, dum dum dum, the big drum roll, Markendium, the body of knowledge. The Markendium books are all out right now, and we are referring to them as Markendium, the essentials. And it's those six books right across the Markendium logo there you can see uh, based upon the six domains of practice. So, friends, here is how this is working, and I know this is a hot button, hot button right now with everybody, so I'll try and say this once and be as clear as possible. In the coming year, we are going to see a transition away from the suggested reading list books to Markendium. Now, we have to give folks time, specifically CPSM candidates, to adopt and absorb the material, the new material, in the Markendium books. Now, here's where it gets a little bit, not tricky, but this is important to understand. The group, and we had subject matter experts, staff members, board members, a lot of senior level folks from SMPS, came together with an outside consulting group to put together these Markendium books. But much of, the tier, much, of the, excuse me, much of the material found in them was drawn from, you guessed it, the current suggested reading list, the books up in the right-hand corner. So at this point in time, what I'm telling people, and this you can take to heart, you can start studying, for the, if you're sitting down just now to study for the test, you can use either set of books, the current suggested reading list or Markendium. Understand also, there are new sections, there is new material, there is new content in Markendium. However, we are not going to even begin to start writing questions based around that new material until well into 2017. Once again, 
we're going to give everybody in the society and beyond plenty of time to read, absorb, adopt all that new material, all that new content. For those of you who have been around for a bit, like myself, this a similar thing happened back in 2009 when the Marketing Handbook 3rd Edition came out. People were nervous. They were anxious. They said, oh, God, Kevin, we're going to, you know, you're just going to gut the test and give us, you know, 150 brand new questions tomorrow. It's all going to happen in a day. And people were nervous and anxious. That did not happen. That would not happen. The society would not do that. Not ever. Uh, they gave the Marketing Handbook, the 3rd Edition, an entire year, again, before they started writing questions on the new sections in that book. And that was back in 2009. The same thing is happening again on a somewhat larger scale. But again, the same mindset. We will give uh, ample time for the new material to be, uh, again, absorbed and adopted by members of the society and all candidates who are preparing for the test. But in the meantime, the, the current material, because remember, our test is based on concepts and principles, concepts and principles found in the current reading list and found in Markendium, therefore. So I've hit that one pretty hard. If there's more questions later, I'll be ready to ask or answer those. But uh, uh, that's a big change, and it's uh, and and set the record straight. We will be retiring books within the coming year. They'll be coming off the reading list, and Markendium, the essentials, will become the go-to set of study materials for CPSM candidates. All right, sorry, took a lot of time on that one, but it's it's a big one, so it's worth talking about. Moving no, along. No, that again. was great. That was great, Kevin. Thanks oh. very much. Just oh, want to pause you. at this time. Um, and, you know, as chapter leaders, everyone on the call, um, you know, it's very important that you do have a degree of familiarity with the CPSM designation, um, what it specifically is, and you are going to encounter some questions like that. We do anticipate that um, when you're out in front of your chapter members and potential members. So, Kevin, you did an excellent job of explaining that. Um, Thank you. At this time, what questions, folks, do you have for us? What questions do you have for Kevin? If you do have a question, please remember you can press the raise hand icon and we'll unmute you. And or you can um, submit your question to the question box. Julio, do you have a question? I, I think I saw some coming through. Yeah, we have, uh, we have a few questions here. Um, first question, does the college degree needed, uh, I'm sorry, need to be in marketing or related field or can it be in any subject area such as biology or mathematics? Great question. Your college degree can be in any field. It can be in any field. It does not need to be in a marketing related field. Thank you. Great. And we have a second question. Um, how long, in your opinion, does it take to study for the CPSM uh, exam fully? I get this all the time, friends. I am not trying to get uh, sort of a Zen Buddhist philosophy thing here uh, where the question is the answer or, or and I don't want to turn it back on you. Again, people learn at their own time, or I'm sorry, people learn in, in their own way at, at their own pace. Uh, so I am slow to give out how long it takes for a person to prepare for the test. Uh, there's many variables. Uh, Again, I will say, you, the candidate, must be the person who can take your own temperature, your, if you will, <laughs> your uh, uh, intellectual temperature, that is, to determine if you feel like you're ready for the test. Definitely say, at the time it takes you to get all the reading done, but again, it's, it, it's not just, okay, sidebar, I love history books. I sit at home in the evening, a lot of passive reading. If I retain information, great. If I don't, I don't. There's, there's no harm. It's passive reading. You, the CPSM candidate, are in the arena of active learning, of active learning. You must, must, must retain the information. Therefore, I'm going to say, give yourself as long as it takes to where you feel that you have comfortably retained the information you have read, even if that means you've gone through a study group with a, with a, a chapter or with your firm. Some groups try and get it knocked out in seven weeks. Some try and do it in six or seven months. But again, even if you go through that entire process and you come to the end of it and you say, you know what, I'm still not feeling comfortable with domain four, domain six, domain two, I want to go back, I beg of you, follow that inner thinking, follow whatever that, that, that conscious, that voice talking to you is, and that, that, that's telling you that, and go back and read and study again. Having said that, Currently, like I've mentioned, there's basically most study groups that the chapters put together, they will give themselves 
somewhere between either a, either a seven-week period, a 14-week period, or whatever three months is. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, or whatever, whatever six months is. Sorry, I don't, I don't mean to confuse here. But again, that, that I, I'm separating out two things here. The time for chapter study groups is determined by the members in the chapter study group and by the, the study group leaders. So that's one thing. But at the end of the day, and here, here's my final answer, it's going to come down to you, the candidate, versus the test. It's going to be you sitting there by yourself, for all intents and purposes, in the testing center with those 150 questions in front of you on the screen. So it's really all about how much and how soon you can get all that reading under your belt. That's my best answer. Sorry, and I'll right. touch more on that later. All right, that works. Let's take uh, two more uh, quick questions. Um, uh, when should they look, or when should we look for study guide number four, 4.0? Good question. Spring, summer of 2017. I, I, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we have just one final question, then we could get moving. Um, I am taking the test or the CPSM test by next summer, uh, so that's summer 2016. Should I study the reading list or Markenium books? Again, um, if you're, a I'm, I'm sorry, Julio, say again, they're aiming for summer of 2017? Yes. Excellent. Well, yeah, what I'm telling folks right now is if you've already purchased the books on the suggested reading list, I don't want to sort of, you know, put it to you, oh, well, just toss all those in the trash and buy the Markendium books. I'm not about that. Again, you should be you should be okay using the books on the current reading list if you've already got them. If you have not purchased books yet and you're aiming for a testing date of summer of 2017, I'd say go Markendium. There's my advice. Because one thing I felt to mention earlier too, and maybe I thought it was already obvious, what we're doing here and the whole exercise with Markendium is to put together more accurate, up-to-date, concise materials both for CPSM preparation and just for the general edification of SMPS members. So again, we, we can't stop books from getting old. I, I, I can't help it that Marketing Handbook and Rainmaking and some of those books have aged. It, it's what it is. And the beauty of Markendium is it's owned by the society and therefore will be vetted and updated on a regular basis by the society. So uh, yeah, the, Mar Mar Markendium is the future. So again, if you are looking that far down the road, I would say, and if you haven't purchased books already, Markendium is your choice. Thank you. All right, that looks to be it for now. We'll take more questions at the end, um, and we can continue with the slides. Excellent. Thank you, Natalie, for reminding me. All right, I'm going to move on, friends. Okay, friends, let's talk about the test here. I know this slide's a bit all over the place, shall we say, but uh, uh, I think you'll cover it because I did it by the numbers, quick and easy. 150. We got 150 questions on the CPSM exam. Uh, all questions are multiple choice, A, B, C, or D. There's no E, none of the above, or F, all of the above. You've got three hours in the top right-hand corner, three hours to finish the test. Folks, please know that's always been, always, always, always been more than enough time for candidates uh, uh, who are taking the test. I've never, ever encountered anybody who's on question 44 and time's up. That, that never happens. Three hours is more than enough time to answer all questions and even go back and review. And yes, the PTC online test offers a function where you can go back, check questions uh, yeah, that, that you have not already answered. Uh, uh, there's a whole review function where you can go back and look at uh, questions left unanswered, so plenty of time. Down here, lower left-hand corner, infinity symbol, uh, I'm being clever, PSI testing centers, as I mentioned to you uh, earlier, there's literally PSI testing centers all over, the, all over the world. I don't know how many there are. That's why I put the old infinity symbol there. There is a finite number, but I don't know what that is. Down here in the right-hand corner, I mentioned again uh, time and date. When um, uh, you receive your eligibility notice from PTC, you, choo you, the candidate, you choose the time and the date you wish to sit for the test. You've got an entire year. One small piece of advice. Again, because the PSI testing centers have many, many, many clients, people coming in, candidates coming in to sit for the test, give yourself, when you call them, give yourself a cushion of at least a week. It's better to say two weeks. Don't call the day of and say, hey, I'll be down there in 15 minutes to take my test. There's a chance you're not going to get a space because, again, it's going to be on a first-come, first-served basis. 
uh, that they're going to already have reserved the places for people who have already called ahead of you. Give yourself uh, at least a week or two ahead in advance. Oh, and by the way, friends, one more helpful hint from yours truly here. When it's time for you to sit for the test, do yourself a favor besides the, all the studying I mentioned. Make sure your desk is clear of work. There's not 20 proposals sitting there waiting for you and your boss is breathing down your neck. Make sure you know, there's just uh, crazy things happening at work. Be in a place where your head is clear and your mind is focused just on the test. My motto is do it once and do it right. And even personal stuff. Oops, so sorry. Even personal stuff. If there's things, if you're traveling or if you've got a whole lot of things on your schedule, on your docket, and you're just busy, 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 that's wait. What you, the, the test is waiting for you. The test waits for you. So use that uh, and, uh, and find a, a time and a place where that, is, that is best for you. So okay, the final numbers, of course, to touch on. These are all membership rates, friends, but right here in the center uh, are the fees for the test. Uh, currently for SMPS members, there's two fees involved and always have been, application fee and examination fee. The application fee is just to determine eligibility, which I touched on earlier. Uh, know this, once the application fee has been paid, you'll never pay it again, ever. What you're, once you're eligible, you're always eligible. They, uh, you're, you're always going to have had that level of education and work, work experience, so it's a one-time fee. The examination fee is $275. Since there's only an online exam now, there's only one fee for members. Grand total is $520. There are costs involved with this program. Uh, it is what it is. There's costs involved with all programs. Um, uh, understand uh, people who receive a non-passing score on the exam, if they want to retest again, and you can retest as many times you, as you want and as often as you want, there is no longer having to wait three months as there was uh, previously. We had a policy in place which we uh, uh, removed upon our relationship with PTC, but, but uh, candidates will always pay the examination fee whenever they sit for the test. So there's numbers. And having said that, Julio, I think we have poll our second and last poll for today. Shall we yeah. do it again, sir? Yep. So the question is, uh, does your chapter offer a scholarship to CPSM candidates? Yep, for sure. Nope, not yet, or I'm not sure. And we'll again Thank give that you. about 30 seconds. Thank you, Julio. Uh, chapter scholarships, I just can't say enough about them. Obviously, it's a great thing when a chapter can offer it. Uh, the uh, um, SMPS last year under the leadership of Marcy Thompson put together the uh, <clears throat> Certification Assistance Award program, uh, which is currently in place. Five uh, candidates receive a, uh, besides some study materials, and this is all online again, friends, um, on, the, on the certification web page, they, uh, 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 they get access to, uh, to a scholarship. And okay, we're done. Over half. That's fantastic news again. Uh, that again, that 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 just you don't know how happy that makes me. Um, uh, a lot of chapters out there offer uh, uh, they cover the entire fee ahead of time. Some chapters offer to re recompense the person after the fact. Some only if they will be recompensed only if they receive a passing score. Every chapter is different. There's no right or wrong. It's their rules as they see fit and as they see appropriate. Uh, if you have more questions on the scholarship program that other chapters offer, give me a shout and I can actually get you in touch with people who I know who uh, have uh, put their uh, the scholarship program to use. Thanks again for that. I'm going to keep going, guys. Getting close. And ah, last uh, set of numbers for the test. This is a big one. Here we go. You must get 110 or higher out of 150 questions correct to receive that 73% to become a CPSM. So there it is. Uh, that's an important one to remember. Uh, 110 questions or more must be correct uh, to get um, out of the 150, and then you are a CPSM. Oh, one more item about the test questions. I touched on this earlier. Uh, remember, when you're approaching the test and when you're doing your reading and your study and your prep, the test questions are going to be applied knowledge. They're going to be application-based questions uh, versus you'll see mostly those. You'll see a few of what are known as recollection questions. I'll give you a brief bad example of a recollection question that you will not be seeing very many of. Here it is. Uh, what is an RFP? A, B, C, or D? Again, that question is not going to challenge a test taker, a candidate, uh, uh, and the society knows that. Therefore, questions are built more like a situation or a scenario. Here is 
uh, not such a great example, but I'll do my best. Um, in this situation, what is the first thing or the best thing a professional services marketer should do to achieve X? And again, that is why when you're reading, don't be thinking, oh, I'm going to find the exact question and the answer in a single paragraph on a single page in a single book. It's not about that. It's applied knowledge. You're going to read the text for concepts and principles, concepts and principles. Be thinking along those lines. Again, not the minutia. You will not be tested on who was the first professional services marketer, what was their home state, or their hair color. The society doesn't knows. You don't need to know that. You know you don't need to know that. You need to be understanding at a conceptual level the principles behind uh, the, 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 the thinking, the knowledge of uh, you know, why things are done and the importance of them. Uh, applied knowledge. Uh, I'll say no more about that because if you get me started, I'll be talking for the next two hours about application-based questions. Who has the time? But if you have more questions about applied questions or application-based questions, you guys know where I live. Always a phone call or an email away. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, we're into recertification here, getting towards the end. Um, yeah, sort of recertification doesn't get covered much, so I was happy to put this slide in. I'll be brief. Uh, friends, you need 50 CEUs. 50 CEUs every three years, uh, and <clears throat> the due date is by December 31st to earn your CEUs to keep your CPSM. So there it is as written out simply. CPSMs are required to earn 50 continuing education units every three years. Uh, CPSMs know this. I send them plenty of information. They get in their three-year process, postcards, emails, letters from yours truly about the, the recertification process. Briefly though, gang, I'm going to go through some of the processes of how to um, earn CEUs. Uh, uh, besides attending educational programs at the SMPS headquarters level, the regional level, or the chapter level, please know that you can also attend um, other organizations, uh, AIA, AGC, ACEC. Again, it always comes back to the domains of practice. If the, the organization is offering a, uh, uh, a program that is based around our domains of practice, it's going to earn you CEUs. Uh, there's some alternative methods uh, you probably are, are, may be aware of. Uh, if a CPSM speaks, does any speaking, uh, they earn CEUs for that. And not just the speaking time, the research and preparation time for that presentation. The same thing with writing. Put something into a newsletter, into an article, into a book, you name it. The writing and then the actual, again, prep time for that earns you CEUs. Um, reading articles in the marketer. You may have seen this as well. Uh, you read an article, you answer a series of questions based on the article, CEUs for that. We have archived webinars you can watch to earn CEUs. The, the um, Lunchtime Learning Lab uh, one's webinars are now saved. You can watch those and earn CEUs. There are many, many, many ways at this point. When I first started in the program, there weren't so many. Now there are many ways for a CPSM <coughs> excuse me, to earn their CEUs literally right from their desktop, spending absolutely no money. One other idea or one other uh, uh, fact that I want to put in your head, friends, and a lot of folks don't know about this one. Uh, some years ago, the board of directors had to sit down and they said, hey, let's jump over the wall to the world of product marketing, those, those folks who do marketing for products. IBM, Nike, Coca-Cola, huge marketing divisions with people earning tons of, you know, uh, getting a whole lot of ongoing education, uh, a whole lot of ongoing training, but not just in, you know, sales, business development, marketing. They're getting it on the product. It's the old maxim, you can't market, you can't sell what you don't know. I can remember it was actually Donna Corlew, she was our national president, and she said, Gavin, we are going to bring that mindset back over to our side of the, the wall, professional services. So when CPSMs attend educational programs that might be more technical in nature for their technical people, uh, I'll give you an example, Wastewater Management 101. Back in the day, I would have said, whoa, where's the marketing or the business development in that? But as I've been told, the help, that attending a program of that nature helps the CPSM with research, with planning, management, business development. We just covered four domains right there. A lot of times an entire firm will attend these programs. Um, oh, if I didn't already mention, in-house training earns you CEUs. But again, uh, those technical courses can earn you CEUs. They are helping you to learn. I boil it down to two simple, my, my two little edicts. One, when you learn, you earn. Meaning, if learning takes place, there's a very good chance you've earned CEUs. And number two, when in doubt, submit. And by that I simply mean if you aren't sure, send it in to me. Send it in to Kevin Doyle. Let me be the one to go. You know what? Not sure about that. Um, oops, I think now I just moved my slide. 
So that means I've got to get going here. But send in your CEUs. Let me be the one to decide. OK, we're almost done, friends. Benefits. Um, there is uh, an infographic you can download at the bottom of the page there under SMPS certification. But again, the benefits are many. And one of them, uh, obviously, increased knowledge. That's an easy one as you are doing, reading all this and learning. And then you continue to learn through attending educational programs to maintain your designation. You are learning. Industry recognition has been shown to be one of the uh, highest uh, uh, parts of um, excuse me, uh, peer recognition. Industry recognition is one of the highest scores on that infographic I mentioned. Uh, credibility with your employers and your peers. Uh, improved ability to compete in the job market. Compensation, looking at our, our, our value compensation that's online, we discovered that CPSMs are making more money and getting uh, more uh, benefits and bonuses than um, uh, some of the people who don't carry a designation and career advancement. So I'm going to keep moving along because I think time is growing short. And oh, a few extras. What's new? We have rolled out in the past year a new program. Uh, it's an immersion course. We call it our R2C program, which is short for Roadmap to Certification, the CPSM Immersion Course. Uh, we had a very successful group, a two-day program with our two speakers, uh, Tiffany Conenkamp and Matt Frankel. This took place in Atlanta uh, this past May. It's followed by a 90-day study plan, a 90-day uh, roadmap, we call it, for people to go through the reading materials after what they've learned during the two-day immersion course. Uh, there's all kinds of materials. There's uh, practice tests. There's exercises. Uh, we had um, uh, study halls with CPSMs uh, leading presentations. We had office hours with Tiffany and Matt to answer questions and quiz and test again. So a really great little program. We'll be doing another program uh, in May of 2017, once again in Atlanta. Look for more information on that. Something else I want to talk about was uh, the upcoming CPSM week. Uh, this is an exciting one. Uh, this is a promotional campaign for the program to help raise awareness. And this year, uh, like last year, we are having a contest amongst the chapters or individual CPSMs uh, to put together a video, a one to two minute video, uh, hopefully with you and your principal talking about the CPSM program, how it can help your firm or how it's helping your firm already. Again, please go to the website to find out more about that. The free of charge, that pertains to you president-elects out there. And if you're not on a phone call, if uh, somebody who is knows their chapter president-elect, please tell them this is their year. They have until August 31st, 2017, that's the current president-elect, uh, any chapter, to sit for the test without paying any fees. They don't pay the application fee, don't pay the exam fee, uh, so please uh, take advantage of that wonderful uh, fit because, uh, it, it, again, uh, the no, no, no fees means all you got to do is get your hands on books, and there's lots of books out there to get your hands on. And the last but not least, I wanted to give a nod again to my friends at Professional Testing Corporation. Uh, it's been a, over a year now, a year and a half, in fact, of longer maybe, uh, since we began using them uh, to handle both test administration, registration, and also, uh, uh, again, uh, actual testing at the PSI testing centers. Things are going very well. People seem to acclimate very easily. A um, few bumps in the road, people getting used to it at first, but uh, I, I sense... Uh, uh, with each passing week, month, I get less and less phone calls and emails. So I think people are uh, on board with PTC, and I'm happy for that because it's, it's a great relationship. They're good people, and they are just helping our program in so many ways uh, that are unseen. But uh, again, I, I, I just I, I can't thank them enough. And uh, so I wanted to give them a quick little nod there. And I think that's it. Question and answer time. Question and answer time. So. Do we want to open okay. things I'll, up, Julio? I'll jump in. Um, we do have a few questions here, um, so I'll just go ahead and start off. Um, so you just mentioned CPSM Week. Um, what yep. event uh, or, or information in particular would you like everyone to know about CPSM Week that's coming up? Uh, specifically about, again, about the, the video contest. Uh, you can go to the website. It gives you, it breaks down for you entirely. And I there's a section, and I'll try and get this. It's, it's kind of tucked away. There's a read more section. I put forth some ideas for what people can do in the way of videos. And again, it can be the entire chapter. It can be an individual CPSM, a group of CPSMs at a chapter, or any, any combination therein. I have tried to make this so there's structure, but it doesn't limit people, which is always tough. I want people to be able to be creative, and I want, and that's, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for their creativity uh, to put together, again, a video that basically highlights a CPSM 
and how either a, a leader at their firm, their principal, uh, whoever their exec director type person is, talking to them about the importance of the CPSM and, uh, again, how it's helping the firm. If they want to go down a different path, though, they can. Some people were talking to me about, hey, Kevin, I want to do sort of a day in my life and show how I do things at my firm, show how uh, you know, my day-to-day -day business helps the firm. Great idea. Others had different ideas. You almost can't go wrong with your with, with your ideas, and I say that, you know, of course, as I, as I say that, someone will come up with some idea that I'll buy, I, oop, not sure that, that's a good idea. But um, yeah, go, go to the website. The, the main thing I'd like people to focus on in the coming weeks is uh, getting together a video. And again, it can be as high quality as you want, it, but, but in the same breath, you can make a high quality video with your iPhone if you want. So there it is, more on, 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 the, on, the, on the CPSM week if you go to the page. And I'm in the process of reaching out to chapters right now, so please watch for further information on that. All right, that's perfect. And we have a question here. It's a, kind of a two-part question. Um, how do I know where to take the exam, and how long does it take to get the results? Ah, two good questions. Uh, let's see here. Uh, you, the eligibility notice you receive from Professional Testing Corporation, uh, that golden ticket I referred to earlier, covers all the details for how to reach out to a PSI testing center. There's a website you can go to. It can be a testing center near your office where you work. It can be near your home. Even if you're on travel, it, it, it can be, like I said, they're all over the world. It, uh, the, the, but the eligibility notice gives full details on the process to uh, actually schedule your exam. And then um, results, uh, two weeks. <coughs> the official, official word is two to four weeks, and that's what comes right down, again, from the, uh, the, the CPSM handbook I mentioned that SMPS and professional testing put together. But um, uh, uh, what I've heard from candidates is that uh, typically they get it by mail, good old-fashioned USPS snail mail, uh, uh, and um, uh, within two weeks. Uh, please know one more thing. Watch your home mail, your, your home address mail. Uh, if you've listed a home address, PTC will send it there first. Uh, they are always, always, always on the up and up with professionalism and uh, with uh, discretion. There are probably still some firms who do this. It's rare, but you might have a reception person who opens mail. PTC doesn't want that to happen with your exam results for obvious reasons. It's extremely, uh, uh, it, it's you know, for, for your eyes only. So um, it will come to your home mail address first. So again, within two weeks after taking the test, look for your home uh, mailing address. If you only listed your work address, obviously it'll come there. Okay, great. And we have a few more questions here. Um, uh, you may have already covered this, but what is the timeline uh, needed to retake the exam? Uh, there, there is no timeline. Uh, you can literally take the test if you want, after you receive your results. Uh, if you received a non-passing score, you can take the test the next day or uh, at any time. Again, the only real there, 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 there is no limit. Um, uh, the only thing is, again, once again, you will pay the examination fee. Uh, online, the online examination fee of $275 for SMPS members every time you take it. And um, your, again, Kevin Doyle would recommend, George Tully would recommend that uh, you take some time. Uh, they, they do, uh, Professional Testing Corporation is going to send you a report uh, with your broken down by percentages per domain of how you scored. Use that as a diagnostic tool. Use that to your advantage to go, oh, yeah, domain six, yikes, uh, scores weren't so good in that area might want to do a little bit more reading, possibly some other study group in some other fashion, talk to their CPSMs. Uh, again, use your network, use the people around you, but uh, I would recommend, you know, put in a little more study time again. Uh, it, it can't hurt. Test yourself, quiz yourself, and then give it, give it another try. All right, and we, we still have some questions coming in. Um, we have a few people asking if you could just repeat quickly um, the, the details regarding the fees for president selects for the uh, CPSM exam. Sure, uh, it's quite simple. The, the, the fees are none, zero. The application fee I mentioned, the $245 for members, and the $275, the exam fee for members, <coughs> for all president elects are waived. So it lasts precisely <clears throat> the time that you are a president-elect, which matches our fiscal year. In this case, that started September 1st of 2016, the current one, and will end August 31st of 2017 within that time frame. And, and, and it's, it's only about applying slash registering. You will simply, uh, the easiest way to do this 
is to go 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 to the SMP uh, this SMPS web page certification. Click on the application, start filling it out, and when you get to the final payment page, send me an email and say, Kevin, I've completed the application up until this point, up until the payment page. I'm a president-elect. What's next? I will then send a message to PTC and say, this person is a president-elect. Uh, uh, waive their fees, process the application, put them through, and your eligibility notice is on the way. So again, no fees between now and August 31st of 2017. And uh, it's simply a matter of uh, us work together working around um, the, the mechanical function, the, the uh, administrative function of the actual uh, test fee being processed. So it's an easy one. Great. And I have a two-part question here. Uh, is the CPS, CPSN testing available at all regional conferences? And also, uh, can you clarify on the passing score of the test? Absolutely. Uh, yes. The uh, No. Uh, uh, the exam is no longer available at regional conferences as it used to be, which was typically done in a paper uh, format. Uh, there is no more paper test. The test is only available online, uh, and it's only available at PSI testing centers. So here's how that works, though. If a regional conference coordinator group or a group of CPSMs just upon their own uh, energy decided to take the test, they, they, they don't want to give themselves a date. Uh, and a lot of folks do that. They want to give themselves a hard and fast date for when they want to test by to, you know, you know, to give, give themselves a, a deadline. Because as uh, we know, SMPS members, they live by the deadlines. You can still go and take the test at a PSI testing center near the location where the regional conference is being held. There's no uh, problem with that whatsoever. But again, there's nothing through SMPS or the regional uh, coordinators to schedule that exam or to, or to set that exam, exam up. It's going to fall entirely upon, the onus will fall entirely upon the, the CPSM who wishes to test. But if a group wants to go, they can, they can go together. I would just recommend again calling, you know, once your applications have been processed and you are eligible and you have your eligibility notices, if you wish to do it together, you wish all to go to the same testing center, uh, I would find out and make sure there is enough space for everybody and uh, the right time you're going to want to call ahead far enough that they will have openings for all of you to sit down together. So, uh, but there is no more testing per se at the regional conferences. Thank you very much. Um, and then oh, a passing score. That uh, sorry, one more time. Yes, 110 out of 150 questions must be answered correctly. That is the uh, lowest number you can get for passing score. So if you get 109 correct, you do not pass. If you get 110 or more correct, you do pass. That will give you a 73%. Break out the old calculator here one more time. One, one, whoops, 110 one, divided by 150 equals 73%. So yes, yeah, so yeah, you must get 110 out of 150 correct for a passing score of 73% on the exam. Great, thank you. We have uh, another question. It's, it's a little specific, but it might, it might help some folks out. Um, what if you're a president-elect uh, but have already paid the fees and are sitting for the exam later this year? You paid your fees already. Did you pay the fees since September 1 of 2016? If you, I know it's hard to get down to the nitty-gritty here, but um, if you paid those fees prior to that date, you weren't a president-elect yet. Uh, sorry. Uh, um, that person, whoever that is, give me, give me a call. If you did pay your fees since September 1st, we can discuss and work out the details for reimbursement. Perfect. Thank there you. It is. Yeah, um, sure. And we do have one last question, it looks like. Uh, how do I find a local CPSM study group to join? Oh, excellent. Yeah, that's... Uh, I'm going to be, I'm in the process right now, it's campaigning season, what I call, I'm reaching out to all chapter uh, uh, study group leaders who I worked with in the past year, I actually call them my uh, CPSM chapter liaisons, but I'm reaching out to find out if there are study groups in the works. Uh, the best, uh, the, the easiest way though for you, because I'll, I'll post something to our website when I have all my information, but it takes a bit of a gathering when I'm chasing down 58 different chapter uh, folks. But again, the easiest way to find out, my friends, if there's a uh, study group in the works, go to your next chapter meeting. Stand up, hey, my name's uh, Kevin Doyle, uh, and I uh, want to become a CPSM. I want to join a study group. There, if, if, if you, you might have a liaison at your chapter. You might have somebody in charge of that. Uh, your, your, your chapter leadership will know who that person is. And uh, if nothing, if there is nobody in charge, 
I can guarantee you there'll be others there who will probably want to join in as well. And that's and a study group has just formed. I've always said a study group could be two people or 200 people uh, if you can find a room big enough for that. But it's just folks coming together. Uh, after that, if the chapter does have in place a program and somebody who helps to lead and organize, fantastic. And that, that can be any uh, member of the chapter leadership. It can be the president, president-elect. They might have an actual chair, like an education chair in charge of it. They might have an actual uh, CPSM uh, person in charge of it. But again, the best way to, to find out real quick and easy is to contact chapter or leadership and, and or go to a meeting and then find out if there's one in the works. I will, in hopefully next month or so, have everything posted about who uh, liaisons are for all the chapters and who has uh, chapter study groups up and running. But it's going to take me a bit more to get that researched. Thanks. Well, those are great questions. Thank you so much, attendees. And Kevin, thank you so much. Very, very informative. I uh, myself am much more informed on the CTSM designation mm -hmm. and ready to share, <laughs> speak, the, <laughs> speak um, the gospel with our members. So thank you so much today. Thank you so much. Um, so chapter volunteers, for the resources that you might need um, in your role as a chapter volunteer, we certainly do encourage you to visit the All Chapter Leaders community of My S and PS. Um, any questions or comments that you have for today's program, please feel free to reach out to any member of the staff here at headquarters, especially your chapter services team. We are here for you. Thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you on our next virtual roundtable for volunteers. This ends our program. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.